everyone, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? I have broccoli in my tooth. Happy Saturday. If you're new around here, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies and a Beat. Series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. Last week, we talked about our favorite spicy white, Taylor Lautner, in his film in which he plays a parkour robbery specialist who falls in love with a girl that looks very suspiciously just like him called Tracers. And also funny, in the in the video I said, I didn't know what people who do parkour are called and ironically they are called Tracers, yeah. It was a hot mess, if you haven't seen it, be sure to check it out up above or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. But today's video, you guys are in for a treat. Today we're talking about a film that might get me demonetized, but you know what? I've searched hell and high water for it, so y'all gonna see this movie, damn it. A few weeks back, I had a viewer of mine say, quote, have you seen that movie with Gabrielle Union where she thinks she's Hitler? And I said, hmm? Quote, just type in Gabrielle Union Hitler and it should come up. And that is where I found this film. It's not on any streaming sites or platforms. And the only way you can really see it is either A, paying for it, or B, finding it in the deep seedy underbelly of the internet. The reason I didn't have a video up last week is because I had spent the entire week on the hunt for a way to show you guys Neo Ned, a 2005 romance about a neo-Nazi named Ned and a black woman who believes she is the reincarnate of Hitler, played by Jeremy Renner and Gabrielle Union, respectively. Now again, this movie is shockingly difficult to find in any usable way to present it to you guys. I had to resort to spending $10 of my good Christian money. Neo Ned, love is not a race. I haven't purchased a movie in so long, but the first one I purchased is a early 2000s, we can f away racism with interracial relationships and meek and mild black women. This film was made in a world that was very, very, very different. <laughs> but also very, very the same. Ideally, nowadays, when people try to pull this garbage, people are more likely, I would hope, would be like, hey, stop making movies about Hitler lovers. Granted, if I'm not mistaken, I have gotten asked to talk about where hands touch, which is, again, another black girl falls in love with a Nazi. I don't know why this is such a trope y'all really want to push for some reason. I, But alas, when this movie came out, it was largely positively received. A 7.1 out of 10 IMBD, 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, 75% of people like this film. Union doesn't miss a beat, just a charming and heartfelt film. In this quirky love story, an unlikely couple meet at a mental hospital where they find love and redemption, proving that opposites attract. Best Feature Film, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress, 2006 Palm Beach International Film Festival. Best Screenplay, The People's Choice Award, 2006 San Diego Film Festival. Official Selection, Tribeca Film Festival. The Audience Award, Audience Award, 2005 Slam Dance Film Festival. So I was intrigued. Is this movie truly as offensive as you would think from the onslaught of just the description of what it is? And the answer to that is yes. Yes, it is. But unfortunately, that's the realization that I feel like much of us have reached through this beautiful and painful process called hindsight. And with that said, for such a well-received film, why is it ultimately so desperately hard to find? Again, the only way you can watch this movie is if you literally go, again, to the seediest underbellies of probably getting a virus. Like, you're, you're gonna go through it, sis because that's the only way, unless you have some crazy ad block, you're gonna have a time. And part of me is sitting here thinking it's partially because if I were Gabrielle Union, I wouldn't want anyone to know that I was ever in this film. Um, I don't know much about Jeremy Renner. Apparently when I brought it up, people said he's done some racist stuff in the past, so maybe this is more on brand than, than I'm aware. As for Gabrielle Union, I, I would imagine this is a, Certainly a, a blemish on her on her acting resume. But with that said, that does not mean I'm not gonna drag you, sis. Now I'm gonna read yet another description of the movie. And the reason why I'm reading so many is because I want you to really, really taste and feel palpably how they were trying to sell this movie. Because before I even watched it, I said, okay, that sounds horrible. What are they gonna do to make it make sense? 
right? Ned, Jeremy Renner is a bigoted young man whose antisocial behavior lands him in a mental hospital. There, Ned, who believes that racial minorities are inferior, meets Rachel, Gabrielle Union, an African-American patient who thinks Adolf Hitler has taken up residence within her. Ned spews racial slurs in her presence but when it becomes clear that Rachel, though disturbed, isn't actually a bigot, they embark on a relationship that confounds everyone around them. How do you, how did he get from calling you a hard R <laughs> to like, oh my God, let's get this love train a choo choo in. Needless to say, this movie is incredibly triggering and problematic, but it's also in ways that you wouldn't even expect. There's so much here. But I think what's also incredibly triggering is that in some parts of the film, it actually feels like um, almost too much like real life. Like it sounds like, oh, this is preposterous. This would not happen in real life, but it does all the time. And it's really unfortunate and really confusing and really just sad. So let's get started. The movie begins with a grainy fade in as you see Rachel and Ned driving in broad daylight in a busted old car. Ned stops the car by the side of the road and he gets out. Now, obviously we can tell that something's been going on because Rachel starts to panic. She's like, no. That I, I immediately noticed that this is not, um, this is not Gabrielle Union's best acting work. Just take me home. I just wanna go home. Please take go. me home. I'm I'm listening. Ned, don't, don't. Listen to me! This is 2005, so a bit earlier in her career. Not her, uh... Well, no, 2005, she was already in a lot of stuff. Wait. No excuse, sis. <laughs> you took the role, you better deliver. If you knew Ned, you'd say what was about to happen was his destiny. Before this film started, I had a sneaking suspicion that this was the direction they were gonna go in. I mean, it is a Nazi romance, but they really are going with the he had a tough childhood. Like they really sitting here and using he had a rough upbringing as an excuse for neo-Nazism. And to have that story humanized by a black woman is just delicious. But yes, Ned had a tough upbringing. His father, with whom he was very, very close to, was imprisoned while he was a young boy. His mother is a bit of an egomaniac who's really focused on being famous. And as he got older, he began to act out as a means to get attention. Then he joined the Aryan Brotherhood. I know, exactly. What, how did we get here? This, <laughs> we went from, he was acting out a little bit, got in fights as a child, now he's a part of the Aryan Brotherhood. Anyway, back to the present. We see Ned shoot at something on the floor off of camera. And then we're given the ever so deep question of how he ended up here with me. Now, as was discussed a bit in the accolades for the movie, the way in which they decide to attack this is by using absurdity, quirkiness, as a way to make this entire interaction stomachable. But we learned of how they met at the mental hospital. Ned was having a tantrum over toast and was ultimately forced to the ground and made to take a sedative. Soon thereafter, we have Rachel bust in through the door, screaming as well and is also tackled to the floor and is administered drugs. But while she's having her tirade, she's screaming nine and that's how you know she's Hitler. <laughs> I would I would like to take a moment and say I am dreadfully sorry to Germans <laughs> because there's anything German any in any way it, in American media, they're immediately going to Hitler. Like I, it's just, I'm I've met some Germans they were pretty okay. The people I've met, like they're not, a lot of them aren't really a fan of the history of Hitler. It's really embarrassing to them actually. So anywho. <laughs> and two, what kind of establishment is this? Brought her in so unceremoniously. Soon thereafter, we hear one of the workers talk about how they heard that she believes that she's Hitler. Rachel believes that she's Hitler. I swear to God, she was barking her orders to her troops. And after overhearing this, Ned becomes intrigued in being all up in her business because that's one thing that racist white people do. As much as they hate black people, they always in <laughs> some black person's business. Soon thereafter, Ned the neo-Nazi introduces himself to Hitler and a black woman. And around this time, I realized we were about eight to 10 minutes into the movie and I have yet to hear a slut. Sticking some crazy n Hitler woman on my floor. And what's next, some Jew roommate? Spoke too soon. One of the things that always goes through my mind when I see a movie undoubtedly written by a white man, it is written by a white man, of course, writes characters that are white and uses slurs. I can't 
help but sit there and imagine them in their little writer's cubicle as they sit there and feel like they've gotten away with something, really stuck it to PC culture. I have to write a character that will say the N-word with impunity because he is racist. And a racist wouldn't be afraid to use the N-word. Does it make you feel powerful, Tim? Does this allow you to live out your fantasy? But honestly, in all fairness, this is literally what white-led activism was. Make love, not war, peace, bro. Like, <laughs> he comes up to Rachel the next day calls her the n-word repeatedly just to her face over and over and over again and puts the cherry on top that he's quote killed in words like you he tells her that the reason why he's been admitted to the mental hospital is because he and a group of his friends from the brotherhood stumped a black man to death but yes he tells her that he's a member of the aryan brotherhood and she says that she has hitler residing within her and for some reason uh, this film really wants to make us believe that this is just banterous chatting, you know? There's nothing incredibly, incredibly awful and inappropriate about this at all. The next day, we hear Ned talk about how he was nearly killed when his foster family committed a group suicide, but he was able to escape because he had to pee. Keep in mind, we never come back to this story and it's completely and utterly anecdotal. There's nothing we needed to know from this story. We don't learn more about why he is the way he is. We don't learn anything from this story. We still don't know how he ended up with Aryan Brotherhood, but we needed to have this story for some reason. Even the therapist is kind of like, well, if you're not gonna tell us how this impacted you, then why, why, why did you feel the need to share this story? Like, what did you feel when that happened? What were you feeling at the time, Ned? I remember getting a race car set. The caseworker gave me a loop-to-loop -loop track. He must have felt something. Maybe he felt nothing. Maybe he was just happy he got a race car set. Is this supposed to be a spark? How she comes in as the sentimental and understanding mouthpiece. Actually, this leads me to a to the thing I've been mulling over since watching this movie or even thinking of the concept of this movie. I don't know a whole lot of black women, mentally ill or not, who are gonna be comfortable with a white man screaming the N-word in their face over and over and over again. But beyond that, this movie is kind of implying that Rachel has risen above his bigotry despite you know, saying that she's a Hitler reincarnate, but she's risen above his bigotry and that she doesn't get angry or affected when he says the N word to her over and over and over again. Actually, the closest she came to even reprimanding him was something along the lines of like, you really should stop saying that. Don't say it to my face. Wait till I walk away and then say it like a good white person should. Again, this was written by a white man, right? So this is a very specific way in which he wanted to represent a black character, a black woman to play part as the counter to the racist, bigoted, loud, obnoxious person. And they do so by making the black woman, quote unquote, rise above the bigotry. And I just hate it so much. It's given me a little bit of black respectability politics. Right, it's your job. You need to keep above it. You need to rise above it. You're not like other blacks. Really? You need to be a particular type of black person to calm and assuage the aggressive, tyrannical racists, us to reel them in and make them realize, hey, maybe I shouldn't be racist and then f them. Boom, that's how we end racism. And I say this being like sarcastic, but there is an element of truth kind of in that that I don't like to admit, but there are a lot of black women and girls who kind of fall into this trap of feeling like they have to be a particular type of black woman to be um, accepted, particularly if you were raised in a pri predominantly uh, white area, I can imagine this is like a big issue in a lot of ways. They want to be a respectable, a likable, a not like the other girls black girl and it's, it's just really sad and it's unfortunate. By proxy, they've let people say and do things around them in ways that degrade them and make them uncomfortable. Grow up and get out of that, it will make you gag. I will tell you, I've had moments where I'm like washing dishes. Then I have a memory of a microaggression that I let go and I just <laughs> But it's okay. We learn from our mistakes. And then suddenly, Ned is musing over what it'd be like to kiss n lips. He paints her a picture of swastikas in art class and gives it to her like a coy little boy. Is that kind of the comparison they're trying to make? Like a little boy picking on this girl because he likes her, but just turn it up to 11. You know, is that it? Is that the vibe we're supposed to get? Because I'm a racist doesn't mean I'm not sensitive. 
white boys on TikTok be like, there's a lot of things I'm gonna miss on that app, but the normalized racism is not one of them. You wanna have a war in order to keep blacks away from the whites, then sneak across the border and meet me for coffee. Or a movie or something. Conservative white men in interracial relationships be like. I think the most insulting thing of this movie are the moments of self-awareness. Like, I feel like this was a very self-aware moment. Nazis be like, racist white people be like, but at the same time, in no way really reprimands it. <laughs> it is just like, yeah, it bees like that. And the black woman is ultimately somehow the background of a story about being the subject of racism. Like somehow he's become the forefront, the hero, if you will, in this movie, because he's a quirky Nazi who had a rough upbringing. Like, who cares? Why do we care? Why do we care? Why aren't we more interested in why, in why a black woman of all people would be willing to put up with this foolishness? I think that's a more interesting story to be had. We never learn anything of Rachel's background other than she has a daughter and she was raped as a child. That's it. That's what we know. She's black, she was raped as a child, and she has a kid. How did she end up getting in a situation where she's humanizing the tale of a white supremacist with a newfound ebony fetish. Ned ends up getting kicked out of the mental hospital for troublemaking. They give him a ticket to send him back home to his mom, but he ends up with a little trickery being able to stay in the area. He comes to visit Rachel again while they're out on an outing at the zoo. By the way, he goes to the zoo in a swastika shirt. And even though this is 2005, I still feel like somebody would have at least giving him a stank face. Even in 2005, that, that was not cool, but no one says anything. You come to the zoo to see me or the animal? I came to see you, Adolf. Just you. I don't know why, but I miss all your bullshit. It's because I'm charming, that's why. <laughs> that's Gee, right, remember? I forgot you're charming. Yeah. They run away together. They have poorly paced standing up sex. And now effectively, most of the rest of the movie is just them living their lives. And it's, it's so like, who cares? Like really, I just, uh, Rachel meets Ned's mom. We never really learn of her parents though, but we meet the mom who, by the way, again, it's another moment of self-awareness this movie has where the mom is like diet racist. She's not like a white cloak racist. She's not gonna put that much work into it. That's pesky business, but she is racist. Like she's not gonna call her the N word in front of her face, nor necessarily detest the relationship or combat it, but. You know, Whoopi Goldberg is one of my favorite actresses. Ned's mom is again, a fame hungry woman. So she's been on a bunch of TV shows in relation to Ned, particularly when he almost died as a child in the suicide thing. And we just learn a lot about her character. Keep in mind, this doesn't really need to, we don't need to know this information. We learned a lot about the racist. We learned a lot about him. So much that we actually just straight up did not need to know, but we still don't know boo about Rachel, but okay. But she's not the star of this movie. The skinhead is. So they're together, they move into an extra trailer that his mom has so that they can live their life together. Woo hoo. Around this time, I noticed that Rachel isn't really doing the Hitler thing anymore. Come to find out, she says later that she was never believing that Hitler was inside of her. She was just using it as an excuse to get admitted because she knew she needed to be, which, goes to further confuse me because if you're not claiming that the world's largest and most vocal and famous bigot in modern history is residing within you, what excuse do you have for dating a neo-Nazi? Why? They've explained nothing. They're just like, black girl, she'll be into it. While sleeping in the bed together one night, Rachel wets the bed because she had a nightmare about the man that molested her. The next day, Ned has a gun. I don't know where he got it from, who knows. Um, he has a gun and he's like, I'm gonna shoot him. I'm gonna shoot the guy that molested you. Before that can happen, someone steals their car, even though it's a piece of junk. But since Ned didn't kill the guys that stole the car, Rachel now believes that he didn't kill the black guy that he alluded to killing in the beginning of the movie. She's like, I don't believe you murdered him. Autopsy showed that he'd been dead long before I even kicked him. That's why they stuck me in this stupid psych hospital. Try to be this hard ass, but deep down inside, you're just a nice guy. Nice guy. Nice guys don't role play Nazi. He isn't edgy or misunderstood. He's a f***ing racist. And again, there's nothing more insulting that this is being co-signed by a black 
actress, Gabrielle Union, no less. I know this must be such an embarrassing moment in life when she thinks back on it. I mean, I, I get it. You had to make a check sometimes, but girl. Well, I guess so. Nobody knew this movie existed until I brought it up. You got away with it, girl. It's fine. Soon thereafter, they find the car. It had broken down not too far away and the robbers had just kind of left it there. There's a scene where he dramatically throws away his Nazi shirt, but then soon thereafter hangs out with all his Aryan Brotherhood friends. And if that isn't art representing life as well, I don't know what is. Ned runs into his old Aryan friends and they end up having a get together at which Ned ends up getting in a physical altercation with one of the guys because they basically ridicule him for hanging out with a black woman. As you can imagine, they didn't use the word black woman, but there you go. Oh, the neo-Nazi doesn't like other neo-Nazis neo nazi on his black girlfriend. That's love right there. But <laughs> that love is not enough to keep him from having sex with a random white woman that came out of nowhere. Art representing life, man. The next morning he comes home, Rachel's awake. She's also very aware that he had cheated on her. He uses some of the most eloquent verbiage ever used to defend himself in regards to his behavior the night prior. I wish to God I could take that back. I mean, I wish I could un her. You wish you could un- He cries and begs her not to leave and that wherever she goes, he'll come with her. He'll help her raise her daughter. It's like, dude, what? You remember, you asked me to tell you a happy story. This is it. Or my happy story. I hate this so much. Is this supposed to be touching? Why are you running away? You cheated, what? The next day, Ned offers Rachel a ride back home. On the drive, he pulls over. Rachel starts to panic because she recognizes where it is. It's the workplace of the man that had molested her as a child. Rachel panics. She's like, don't go inside. Don't do anything. I don't need you to do anything. Yada, yada, yada. I don't want this. I just want to go home. I just want to see my daughter. But Ned is like, nah. He goes in, gets in a tussle with the guy. And then Rachel shoots him. Stone cold death. But Ned wants her to get away. He doesn't want her to get caught and go to jail. So he decides to shoot him a few times. He then tells Rachel to run off with his car. He's then arrested, able to live happily ever after, going to the same jail as his father. Rachel goes home and spends life with her daughter. And Ned's mom has the ability to go to another TV show in which she talks about the time that she spent with her son, the neo-Nazi, who was dating a black woman that he met in a mental hospital. So I'm sure she had a fun time. And that my friends is the movie. Hate it, hated every part of it with every fiber of my being. Honestly, I could sit here and talk about all the things that make me greatly uncomfortable about this movie. But if I want to have this video up by Saturday, I don't have the time to do that. So I'm gonna just hit you with some blanket statements really quick that both apply to this movie and also in real life. One, just stop making movies that are love stories about Nazis. Black women come up a lot, I don't know why. <laughs> or Jewish women, I'm sure Jewish, I'm sure Jewish is pretty popular. Popular, is that the word choice? Or common, Ew. both of which make me uncomfortable. Stop doing it. I don't know what is with this incessant need to humanize Nazis. There's so many people that deserve to be humanized. I don't think Nazis are on the top of that list, my guy. Maybe refugees. Uh detainees, people getting forced hysterectomies. That did not need to rhyme. I didn't mean that too. But like, there's so many other people that deserve to be humanized, okay? Nazis aren't them. On a related note too, stop making movies that make racism wholesome. Cause that was just something that they never really discussed or honed in on. It just kind of became this thing that's like a backdrop. It's like, yeah, he's racist. Ah ha 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 ha. Like, no, he's racist. Like he's racist. He is racist. That should be enough. It's not, well, he's a little bit right. Like he's racist. <laughs> three, am I on three? Whatever, I'm on three. Stop using black women, particularly sex with black women as like the tool to end racism. Again, as I was talking about before, it kind of feels like it puts the responsibility on black women to end the bigotry of people that decided to be bigots. Like that's not our job. Stop making everything our job. It's not our job. You decide, you woke up on this side of the earth and said, you know what I'm gonna be? Racist. And also for all you weirdos that think that interracial relationships end racism, it doesn't. People can have sex with you and still be racist. They can have kids with you and still be racist, marry you and still be racist, completely and utterly integrate you into their lives and still be racist. Four, if you are a black girl or woman who is letting a non-black person say some 
out of pocket you because it's banterous. Um, I hope y'all not letting people call you the hard R out there, but just in case, I just realized I didn't finish this thought. Basically what I was gonna say is stop letting people talk to you out of pocket, especially if it has to do with like race. Like that's not cool. You in these places and you want the affirmation and the validation of who? Racists? Doesn't sound like a fun time or worth the effort. Don't do it, sis. Also on a similar token, stop asking people if they like black girls. Do you like black girls, senpai? Like, stop looking for these weirdos validation all the damn time. And I get it, I get it. Black women are always kind of treated like crap, undervalidated in a lot of situations and I completely get that. Do these people's validation matter <laughs> is, is ultimately the question. And five, mental illness does not explain away racism or Nazism. Like sometimes people just be racist. Also mental illness is not quirky. That's also a very weird mechanism they use to make it not as menacing. I mean, I guess is I guess that was the goal, I don't know. Again, he's going up to a black woman saying racial slurs to her, but okay. Not a big deal though, that's that's totally fine. With that said, I, I do believe that you can tell a story of mental illness in a way that's somewhat humorous as a bit of a coping mechanism. It, it really depends on execution and this movie did not, did not deliver that in any way. Cause it couldn't, cause the movie is about a racist and a black woman getting together. How could you? Yes, big fat zero out of 10 would not recommend. The movie's horrible. Also just on a technical note, uh, Gabrielle Union, not her best performance, just like acting wise, like the least important part of this. Like, whoa, really bad. <laughs> and then Renner, he was okay, I guess, all things considered. It's truly a befuddling concept why you would even want this movie to be made. And it's also really indicative on how things have changed, yeah? Cause like 2005, that's what we need to do. We need to come together. Black people, stop being so mad. Some things don't change. <laughs> but yes, this is very indicative of 2005, white people saying how to end racism. Love each other, have interracial relationships, have little mixed babies, little tan mixed babies. And um, I hate it. I hate it with every fiber of my Negro being. I hate it so much. Now, I'm not saying how you can watch the movie if you wanna watch it. From what I hear, there are places out there that carry it that may be like a movie 7.tv, but I don't know. If you like this video, be sure to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. Oh, before I leave, I've had a lot of people asking me to talk about cuties. I have not seen cuties. I don't plan to see cuties. I don't think I need to watch it to know how exploitative it is. Actually, um, I was watching D'Angelo Wallace's video and it was spot on, like how I thought. I don't need to watch this to know that this is exploiting children. And people were going on and saying like, you know, like she was trying to make a movie that was trying to show how awful child exploitation is by exploiting children. So I don't care. I don't care what your message was. You effectively made it nothing, like because you exploited children to do this message, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's my stance on it. I'm not gonna talk about it. I don't wanna watch it. I don't want to in any way be a part of it. <laughs> People also wanted me to watch Mulan and, and there's a lot of controversy with that. And honestly, I didn't really wanna watch it anyway. So those two, I'm just not gonna do. <laughs> like I'm just not gonna do it. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. I'm gonna actually try to make a video this Tuesday. I'm always skipping it on accident. Not on accident. The days just whiz by and, and then I'm like, oh my God, it's Tuesday. Again, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, and other places. You'll be surprised where you can find me, all of which are Kenny JD. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.